Talk and Rock Radio, where friends meet at the intersection of life, inspiration, and music. Here's your host, Rick Kern. Welcome, everyone, to Talk and Rock Radio. A few episodes ago, I did a show with Bill Taylor. It was uh, called I Love You, Gorgo. And in that episode, we talked about the history of Tazmet and Sumi Records with his uh, partner, Kenny Smith, um, who has passed away now. But I, I was saying how cool it would be to find some of the old episodes that Kenny did with his podcast that I think he started around 2008. It was called Word Jam. Well, we have found those missing episodes, and I am so glad to have discovered them again, and I wanted to bring them back to life uh, on my show here. So, I'm going to start out today with uh, with one of those episodes. It's it's number 32 that he did. Um, I think it was 2008, something like that. And uh, well, I want you to enjoy. He was such a great podcaster. You know, this is before podcasting even got popular, and he was already a pro doing it. So anyway, sit back and enjoy uh, this little show um, that that features. Kenny Smith talking about some of El Paso's bands. Word jam. El Paso Rock. I was raised out in the West Texas town of El Paso. It's the most interesting geological location. It's about 5,000 feet above sea level. And the Rocky Mountains end in El Paso, the last of a huge chain. Mount Franklin divides El Paso into two distinct areas, the east and west. This large, dusty town is halfway between Dallas and L.A., sitting on the Mexican border. In fact, you could take a taco and throw it to the west, and it would fall into Mexico. Or you could take a burrito and throw it to the south and it would fall in uh, Mexico. El Paso was always kind of out of the loop when it came to Texas politics or business. I always had the feeling that El Paso really wanted to be part of New Mexico. One of the great attributes of El Paso was the vista. You could see from horizon to horizon, 180 degrees. I live in Seattle today, and the beauty is right in your face. In the southwest, you had to look very close. When you looked very close, you saw what a beautiful place it was. called a second generation rock and roller after Elvis and Chuck Berry and Jerry Lee Lewis and all of those great old cats. It was like the second wave of rock and roll. Not only was the town split in two, the music scene of the 60s was divided into two camps. You had the small bands and the large bands. that their idols were people like James Brown. There are great bands like Bobby and the Premiers and the Night Dreamers. And these bands rule El Paso. I remember we 
recording this Lou Pride record in our Upper Valley Kazmit Studios. He was a transplant from Chicago in the military and had moved to El Paso. You could hear the El Paso influence in his music. the string bands, you know the small bands with two guitars, bass and drums. The big influences were Buddy Holly, Richie Valens, Eddie Cochran. I'm not gonna tell you how it's gonna be. Are you gonna give me your love to me? I wanna love you night and day. You know my love and I fade away. Our most famous rock and roller was Bobby Fuller. He had had a national hit with I Fought the Law and the Law One. But this is an early recording of his done in his Eastwood studio, Not Fade Away. He recorded mostly his own stuff with his band, but once in a while he'd venture out and record another group. From the west side of town, the Sherwoods came over and made this record. Here a thousand miles away, where I live in Crawford. No, I don't believe in you. I want to find my spot. Fuller is actually singing background harmonies on this record, along with Henry and Eddie Martinez, and lead singer Bill Taylor. I know that you hope that in life you hope from all it is not me. Bobby Fuller had the best studio in El Paso, but there was a lot of small studios in and around El Paso. K Hay Radio, which was a country and western station, had a small studio, and they recorded a lot of bands. set on Sumi Records. It was called David Kathleen. He came to me. His real name was Colin Flanagan, and I have no idea to this day why his name was changed for the record. There was an icon from the west side of town named Sonny Farlow. He and his brother Richard always teamed up with good players and they'd play all the dives, all the bars downtown in the basements, the Green Frog. And once in a while you put out a record. And this is a strange release because it's actually a Bobby Fuller tune. So what you have is El Paso musicians emulating El Paso musicians. Up in Las Cruces, New Mexico, there was a label called Frog Death. It was owned by Steve Crosno, who at that time was the most famous disc jockey in all of El Paso. The Impostors put out this record with a cameo role in the beginning by Steve Crosno himself. El Paso was pretty isolated back in the 60s, being hundreds of miles from cultural centers. There's so many influences that make up the color of the El Paso music scene. In the West, we had uh, surf music. In the East, we had country and western. Coming out of the South, we had mariachi bands. And in Juarez, Mexico, we had the blues. And up in Alamogordo, New Mexico, 
Yucca Records was recording one of these great blues players from Juarez. migrated from Beaumont, Texas to a little funky club in Juarez, Mexico called The Lobby. The Lobby was church for a lot of young rock and rollers. It used to stay open until four in the morning, six nights a week. It was a rough club. You had to go over the Mexican border, walk down a couple of blocks on the right into a really funky place that had been there forever and was just a mecca for music. Before Long John got there, there was a South Texas blues player named Little Joe Washington that used to play the lobby. Little Joe was a frantic guitar player, a lot different than Long John, who was an easy shuffle player. He used to have a fluorescent green Telecaster, and he'd hang from the ceiling upside down playing his guitar. I once asked, how come he played so frantic? And he told me, I'm in search of the ultimate note, and if I ever find it, I'll disappear. Heading northeast of El Paso, you run into Clovis, New Mexico, where Buddy Holly recorded all of his stuff. He recorded with a man named Norman Petty. Bobby Fuller had recorded a few songs there, as well as this band here, The Sojourners. there was a studio in the Upper Valley called Tasmit. They were recording the El Paso version of psychedelic music. Groups like Boiling Wall and Iota, and this Sumi group called Lodestar. Lodestar was made up of four really talented musicians that had all gone to Austin High School. Like a lot of El Paso musicians, they had played in a lot of different groups. one of the original guys from Austin High School. And on this record, he teamed up with what I consider still an icon in El Paso music, Rod Crosby. favorite stories of the old El Paso days was I had recorded Lou Pride in our studio up in the Upper Valley. We recorded this song called I'm Coming Home in the Morning. You know, cost up about 500 copies. What was interesting was that the rhythm section came from players from the east side of town and the west side of town, all coming together to make one good song. So we pressed it, put it out, and Lou sold it at his gigs. Years later, I had moved away from El Paso down to Memphis, Tennessee, which is another story. But in the process of doing this, somebody got a hold of I'm Coming Home in the Morning and bootlegged it. And it ended up in England. 
and became a number one soul hit in England, and I didn't even know about it. The beauty of this is the loop ride's still out there, and he's still performing, and he's performing in England a lot, and Germany. Well, Lou became a star. He plays this song every night at his gigs. And who would have ever guessed that a bunch of rock and rollers from the Southwest put together this fine tune? You just never know which way the wind's gonna blow. And I come home in the morning. Oh, yes, I will. I come home in the morning. of all their heritages are the fingerprint of the music scene the of Penny Town. The El Paso music scene had its own personality. Even though the big time record producers didn't come through El Paso and sign all the local bands to big contracts, doesn't mean that the music wasn't great. To me, El Paso music ruled. songs used in this doc were Long John Hunter's El Paso Rock, followed by Bobby Fuller Four's original I Fought the Law and the Law One, followed by Lou Pride's There's Got to Be Someone for Me. After that, Bobby Fuller Four again, Not Fade Away. Then Bill Taylor and the Sherwoods, You Hold My Letters, Not Me. The Sherwoods again, Blackout, David Kaplan's You've Got to Be Kidding, Sonny Farlow, The Magic Touch, The Imposters, Wipe In, Long John Hunter's Come On, The Sojourners, Sun Summer Days, followed by Lodestar's Glimpses, Crosby's Closets, Our Love So Warm, Lou Pride's I'm Coming Home in the Morning, Long John Hunter's I Want to Love You, and finally what you're listening to now, the Word Jam theme by the Utsman at sumirecords.com, which is S-U-E-M-I-R-E-C-O-R-D-S.com, you can see a lot more stuff about El Paso music. website for El Paso Music is elpasomusicians.blogspot.com. That's elpasomusicians.blogspot.com. Oh, yes. Word jam. Number 32. 